Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland and here I am at Poets Walk at Eton where uh, Percy Bysshe Shelley would uh, spend some of his time uh, when he was in a pensive mood. He was a noted uh, cloud dweller. Um, so Shelley came here um, when he was um, 12 years old in 1805. They didn't all begin in September. There were two halves of the year, two very long terms. One beginning in August going on till Christmas and one beginning in January going on till about um, June. Um, the Eton still calls them halves, even though they're three terms these days, with typically delightful Etonian illogic. So um, it's, it's by this little um, stream, which is a tributary of the Thames. You can see the stream behind me, and the Thames is over that away behind me. That's the Thames, about 50 metres um, distant. So um, uh, Percy Bysshe Shelley, he was um, born in uh, Sussex. His father was Sir Thomas Shelley, a Whig Member of Parliament, rather conventional figure and uh, Percy was the firstborn of that family. His grandparents had lived in, in New Jersey and um, owned extensive land there, been very wealthy. So he was born very much into, into an establishment family. Uh, he was the eldest of six siblings, so he had um, uh, four younger sisters and then a younger brother, who was the Benjamin of the brood. Um, so Shelley, he went to Zion House uh, School. Um, Zion um, uh, House is an area near London, um, well, in London these days, it was considered outside London back then. This huge pond didn't exist when I was here. It's because we've got this Thames flood relief a channel. Anyway, so um, Shelley was educated in, in, in the classics, you know, Latin and ancient Greek being the, the mainstream of education in those days. For those who had an advanced education, remember this being um, the 18 uh, noughties, some people didn't go to school at all. Um, so they came to Eton, the King's College of Our Lady of Eton, beside Windsor, founded by Henry VI in 1440. Boys only school. There weren't that, but there weren't many secondary schools for girls. There was no tertiary education for females. Um, so everybody had to board. So there were a few hundred pupils. There were King's scholars, and then there were Oppidans, those who didn't have scholarships, those who paid fees, and some of them from very well-got families. Of course, he was upper class himself, but he very much sympathised with the underdog, partly because he was the underdog here. Um, he was a highly eccentric character. He had a very high-pitched voice, which didn't help his case. He was um, ferociously bullied. And we're coming to the end of Poets Walk. I see how the vegetation has grown very thick. In my childhood, it wasn't like this. I mean, this tree, I don't think it had fallen, but you could walk right to the end of it. It doesn't go very much further, just about five more metres. Um, um, anyway, it's, it's, it's not term time, so nobody's around back then. He would come here and he would snooze in the afternoons, perhaps um, compose some of his first verses. But uh, he would like getting up to um, hijinks, playing pranks on people, giving them electric shocks and so on. People were only just beginning to understand electricity in those days. But uh, he was severely bullied. There were Shelley Bates when people would grab the books out of his hands and things like that and surround him, rag him, as, as they would say. So uh, it was difficult for him and uh, he was not made for uh, sportive pleasures. And because he wasn't given to playing games, people thought he was a, a wimp and effeminate and things like that. Um, there was no school uniform in those days. I'm not sure if he dressed in an unusual manner as well. Um, so then he, he uh, wrote a novel called Zastrozzi here, right before he um, finished school. And there was no school leaving examination in those days. I'll tell you why these people in the early 19th century produced far more magnificent literature, because they didn't have GCSEs and A-levels to contend with. We're doing exams all our lives. Even at my age, I'm still doing qualifications. Um, so it's sort of put a, such a damper on, a dampener on artistic inspiration and accomplishment by forcing people to sit through these batteries of exams. Um, anyway, so uh, then he went up to uh, University College, Oxford, i.e. that's one of the colleges of Oxford University. Oxford's got about 39 colleges in the university these days, would have been about 20 in his day. But he um, sold that Gothic novel, Zastrozzi, it's set in Italy, as the name suggests, just before he um, uh, left school and he uh, made quite a lot of money out of it and he had a big blowout dinner for him and his friends. So he was not a, a, a joyless sort as you might imagine him to be. He was unpuritanical, even though he was a vegetarian, he rejected Christianity and that was regarded as utterly scandalous in those days. Mad Shelley they called him. They thought he was insane or Shelley the atheist. Um, so he really stood out in this way. Obviously the school was an was a Anglican school. He'd been brought up as a communicant of the Church of England and this uh, provided um, uh, a safe birth for um, all sorts of people. It was a, a job with considerable emolument, cachet, um, and a very agreeable lifestyle. Plenty of money, a good house, high social status, and almost no work. Wow, 
what's not to like. No wonder a lot of them um, became um, men of science or writers and so on. But uh, I don't want to go too much into time at Oxford, that's really the subject of another video. So um, anything else about Percy Bysshe Shelley? I've, I've been um, absolutely scintillated by him since I was eight years old and Mr Black read us Ozymandias as part of Brave New World actually, if I got that right, which is written by another old Italian, Aldous Huxley, who taught French here. Um, in the First World War, taught George Orwell indeed, but George Orwell um, didn't think much of him as a schoolmaster. It's just down there, the main building, college, as in that's the house where the King Scholars live. I don't think um, uh, that Shelley was a King Scholar. He certainly wouldn't have needed one. He wasn't short of pennies because he's from an affluent family, but um, as he was later cut off without a penny by his um, father for, um, well, for having himself sent down from Oxford for writing The Necessity of Atheism, refusing readmission to Oxford when he was offered it on, on uh, the condition that um, he recant his atheistical views, but he would not agree to that proviso. And then, of course, running away with Harriet Westbrook to to marry her without his father's say so, going to North Britain where they could marry below the age of 21 without parental permission. Anyway, that's just a little bit about um, Percy Bysshe Shelley here. I'd like to read more detailed or biographies to find out more about him here and at Univ, that's University College Oxford. And in upper school here at Eton, this the, um, was once used as a classroom. There are these wooden panels, and you can see how he's etched his name into the into the um, wooden panel. That's allowed. That wasn't graffiti. But I thought you had to be third generation or more to do it. Maybe nowadays you do. Um, and I've traced my finger through that. And as an adolescent, it was magnificent to think I could somehow connect with him. I could touch the precise place where that immortal poet touched. And I've been to his grave. I've been as physically close to his mortal remains as I can possibly be. Um, so uh, I hope he's, he's, he's ensouled in his verses for me. That's enough for me, so please follow me on Twitter and Instagram, on Facebook, and book online lessons with me and poetry and all sorts. And um, yeah, hire me as a tour guide in London and its environs. Oh, and thank you so much for donations. I urgently need you to keep the channel going. But to PayPal, georgecallahan79 at gmail.com. Callahan is C-A-L-L-A-G-H-A-N. That's all small letters. Right, toodaloo.